Hello friends, welcome to session 16 of JBoss EAP Administration. In this session, we will learn how we can upgrade JBoss from 7.x to 8 version. Okay, so uh, this is just an extracted information on the upgrade, which exactly you need to follow. Because if you go to the internet and if you go to the documentation of the JBoss Red Hat and anywhere, okay, then you will uh, find a scattered information and it is very difficult to understand what exactly the steps that we need to follow. What are the instructions that uh, is required, right, for, for the upgrade. But this is, uh, uh, before we, go, we going ahead for the practical implementation, okay. In this session, I am going to give you an exact overview of what exactly the process that you need to follow. What are the important terms that is related with the upgrade, okay. And before you going uh, for the uh, practical session of the JBoss upgrade, it is very important for you to go through this particular session because this will give you a complete understanding of the upgrade what are the tools we used for the upgrade what is the process that we follow and what are the prerequisites for the upgrade and what are the important action points that you need to take care when you go for the upgrade from jboss 7 to 8 okay so let us begin with the upgrade and patches okay so first we will talk about what are the different kind of upgrades or the versions that has been released okay uh, from the jboss okay so the first one is the major upgrade so major upgrade is specifically when you upgrade from one of the major version of the jboss to the second major uh, version of the jboss okay so if i talk about the major version that means uh 5.0 6.0 7.0 and 8.0 these are the major upgrades okay so that means if you are upgrading from 5 to 6 6 to 7 or 7 to 8 so these these are called the major upgrades okay and apart from that you have a minor upgrade so uh, minor upgrades you can say uh, it, it increase the major upgrade version with some incremental value okay for example if you are on 7.0 and if you are going with a for a minor uh, updates okay then the version of 7.0 will increase to 7.1 okay similarly you can see the 7.1 7.2 7.3 7.4 7 and similarly you can see the same pattern for 5 and 6 version as well okay so when the major version is increment by some value that means it is a minor updates or the minor upgrades okay and then apart from that you will have a cumulative patches that means there are certain patches uh those are the security patches or maybe the bug fixes uh, that has been released by the jboss regularly that you can apply in your current version so what happens is that when you apply the cumulative patch some of the major cumulative patch is each in it increment the minor upgrade or you can say the minor version with some incremental value Okay, for example, if you have uh, upgraded your JBoss from 7.0 to 7.1, okay, then if you are applying some cumulative patches that has been released after 7.1, it will be increment the version by 7.1.1. Okay, so this is called the cumulative patches. So these are the three terms that you have to understand very uh, uh, properly. Okay, what are the major upgrades, what are the minor updates or minor upgrades, and then cumulative patches. Okay. And let us up, uh, understand the upgrade options. This is very important slide. Uh, it will we will discuss here about the different tools uh, that we use for the uh, upgrade of the JBoss. Okay. So now when we specifically talk about the upgrade of JBoss, okay, the two uh, major things that we have to take care. One is your infrastructure related configuration. That means your server configurations, right? And second is your application that has been deployed on your JBoss. So in a nutshell, we can say that when we are going for the upgrade of JBoss, then we have to upgrade two things. The first is the server infrastructure, server configurations, and second, after that, we have to upgrade your applications, Java applications that has been deployed on your uh, JBoss, right? So there are two different tools from uh, from the JBoss, okay? And then we have some open source tool as well for for the these kind of a configuration changes. So when we talk about the server configuration changes. So for server configuration changes, you can follow the uh, JBoss server migration tool, which is called SMT. Okay. And this tool is used for the upgrade of the server configuration from previous version to the new version. Okay. So this tool will take care of the complete end-to-end -end upgrade of your server configurations. Whatever the new changes in terms of infrastructure has been released by the JBoss in the new version, it will automatically be converted from previous to the new version. For example, if we are going to upgrade from 7.0 to 8.0, then 8.0 has some major changes in terms of the server configuration. So once you will run the SMT tool, it will automatically upgrade your server configurations from previous version to the new version. You don't need to do any specific manual changes there. Okay. And similarly, when we talk about the application related changes, okay. 
so uh, that is a bit i would say this is a bit complex area if specifically when you are using a uh, multiple enterprise applications okay which has a lot of integrations to the outer world that means it has a multiple upstreams and multiple downstreams okay then you have to uh do a thorough analysis of for the applications before you going up for the upgrade what are the uh, changes specifically in terms of the functionalities uh, depreciated or enhanced or incorporated in the new version of the jpos which you are going to upgrade okay and then based on the current application whatever that that you are using that uh, uh, that changes you have to make by your own it could be manual it could be through the mtr tool okay and basically when we talk about the mtr tool so migrator toolkit for runtime it, it is a tool that specifically give you about the information what exactly the information or you can say about what are the changes that your application required before you going ahead for the deployment of your application in the new version of the jboss okay so this will identify all of the changes that is required at the application level and then to make that particular changes you have a different method either you can go for certain open source tool or you can do the manual changes there are multiple options for that one okay and third is if you prefer you can go for the manual upgrade as well but this is not the recommended approach okay so now if you talk about the upgrade path so uh, we have a major versions of the jboss 5 6 7 and 8 and hardly the customers are using 5 as of now or 6 as of now so if you would uh, want to migrate from jboss ef 6.4 you must first migrate to the latest community patch version of jboss ef 7.4 that means if you are on the 6.4 version which is a very old one and hardly any customer is using that one most of the customers are on 7.0 onwards okay but if you have any customer that is using 6.4 and they would like they would like to upgrade for uh, the jboss 8 then you can't upgrade directly to jboss 8 from 6.4 you have to upgrade to the 7.4 first okay from 6.4 and once it is upgraded to 7.4 then you can upgrade for 8.0 oh. okay so this is the upgrade path when you uh, when we talk about the upgrade of the jboss major versions okay to the current 8.0 version okay so now jboss 8.2 provides backward compatibility for jboss ef7 applications however if your application uses features that jboss ef8.2 has depreciated or removed you might need to modify your application code that means if you are upgrading your application from 7, 7 to 8 then your uh, jboss is providing the backward compatibilities okay but only for the features that is remains untouched in 7 and 8 that means the feature that has not been changed but if you have a certain kind of a feature that has been depreciated or removed in the new version and if you are still using that uh, that features in the 7.0 version then before going ahead for the migration of the 8.0 version from 7.x okay you have to upgrade or update your application to remove all the features or functionalities wherever you are using the depreciated functionalities or the depreciated or removed features okay so that tool is not going to any tool is going to do any uh, that changes for you and you have certain certain uh, uh, automation automation tools okay or you can create your own automation tools or you can have some manual methods for that changes okay uh, but that depreciated features you must have to change before you going ahead for the new version okay and the jboss 8.0 release introduced several changes that might impact your application deployment to ensure a successful migration conduct research and planning before attempting to migrate your application so as i said uh, when we talk about the complexity of the upgrade in terms of server configuration and in terms of application application changes so application changes part is the most complex part okay because smt tool will do a lot of uh, almost 99.9% work for you in terms of the server configuration changes but when we talk about the application then you have to do a thorough planning and research before you are going for the upgrade because you have to understand what are the application related features that has been uh, incorporated in 8.0 what are the features that has been depreciated or removed what all are the features your current applications are using and based on that you have to do a thorough planning before you go for the Uh, upgrade specifically in terms of the application upgrade okay now when we talk about uh, the major change in terms of 7.x to 8 okay so moving application from jboss 7.4 to jboss 8.0 will require code changes due to the move from jakarta ee8 to jakarta ee10 converting from the java x namespace to jakarta namespace okay so now uh, let me give a small idea of what exactly is jakarta enterprise edition 8 and jakarta ee10 okay uh, because that has a major change that has been incorporated in, in the jboss 8 okay 
so uh, i'm sure uh, if you have some idea of the java application or jdk okay so earlier now which is jakarta enterprise edition jakarta ee earlier it was java ee enterprise edition okay and it was owned by the java community process from the oracle okay now in september 2017 oracle decided to give away the rights for java enterprise edition which is java ee to the eclipse foundation the language is still owned by oracle okay so that means that community part of the java enterprise edition okay which is used for some building of the java your your java enterprise applications that has been given by the oracle to the eclipse foundation in 2017 okay and then after that eclipse foundation has to legally rename the java enterprise edition because that java brand is owned by the oracle right so once it has been moved from oracle to the uh, the eclipse foundation okay in 2017 after that uh, the name of java enterprise edition java ee has been changed to jakarta ee so that means now all of the features uh, functionalities enhancement uh, whatever that you are seeing on it is it uh, on the jakarta enterprise edition java ee which you can also say as java ee okay uh, and then all of the things that has been conducted by the eclipse foundation community okay so since 2017 we have a jakarta ee 8 9 9.1 10 and 11 which is expected to be released in june or july 2024 24 so currently we have a jakarta ee 10 okay so now if we talk about uh, the uh, the changes in uh, in in 8.0 okay that means that uh, till 7.0 it was using the java enterprise edition okay and but from 8 onwards now it is specification has been changed from to jakarta enterprise edition okay that means till 7.4 whatever the code that you define in your application where you where you import the java functionalities okay and for java functionalities of enterprise edition there we specify the java x in the code right in the java class files or java uh, code that we write okay at top of the code okay so there you have to change everywhere in every code file you have to change java x string with the jakarta string this is one of the major change even you have a certain kind of functionalities that uh, that is not required any changes from 7 to 8 but this is one of the basic uh, feature that must be required in each and every application that we are going to uh, to upgrade from 7.x to 8 where you have to change the java x to jakarta in each and every code file okay so now uh, for upgrade you have to focus on two things the fun is the mtr tool and second is the smt tool for the server configuration you have to focus on the uh, smt tool and when we talk about the application related changes then you have to focus on the mtr tool so when we will see when we will run the mtr tool for our code analysis then it will show you the complete end to end uh, changes that you need to be done in your application when you are going to uh, to migrate your application from 7 to 8 okay now analyzing the application okay so when we talk about the uh, migration toolkit runtime which is used to analyze the code and architecture of your jboss ef6.4 and 7 application before you migrate to jboss 8.0 okay so this is a tool tool that you can use to upgrade from 6.x uh, version as well okay it's not a specifically for 7.x to 8.0 if you are going from 6.x to 7.x then this is a tool that is required for your application analysis okay so mtr is an extensible and customizable rule based set of tool that help simplify migration of java applications mtr analyze the apis technologies and architecture used by the application you plan to migrate providing detailed migration report for each application so whatever the application that you have created whatever the code uh, you have created okay this tool will do the complete end to end analysis of all of your code automatically and then it provide you the different set of information that you need to take care while you are going for the upgrade of your application okay the first one is like detailed explanations of the necessary migration changes what are the changes that required whether the reported changes is mandatory or optional and apart from the changes suggesting the changes it will show you if it is a mandatory or if it is an optional whether the reported change is complex or trivial it is a complex or uh, some trivial kind of a changes that doesn't required uh, high uh, efforts linked to the code requiring the migration change so apart from uh, suggesting the what are the changes that is required along with that it will you give you a link of that code file okay so that you can click on that code file and directly reach to that particular code file and what are the changes required and which file and where exactly is the file you can reach to the location of that file as well 
hints and links to information about how to make the required changes. Also, it will give you some kind of a hints how you can perform the changes. Okay, whatever whatever have been suggested by the tool, an estimate of the level of effort for each migration issue found and the total estimated efforts to migrate the application. Along with that, it may will give you some the estimation of the efforts that is required for the complete application changes that has been suggested. So this is a very important tool, uh, specifically in terms of the application migrations. Okay. Now, uh, you can uh, download the MTR tool from the uh, developer.redhead.com or from access.redhead.com where you can create a free account. Okay, and after that, you can go to download sections. And once you reach to the download section, then you have to search for the migration toolkit. Okay, and in the migration toolkit, you have to download the web console. Okay, so that you can open the graphical user interface of the tool for the application analysis okay so once you will run the uh, this uh, mtr tool this is the first screen that you will go receive okay and then where you have, you have to create a first create a project and once you will create a project after that you have to select or uh, upload your code and then it will start the analysis and then it will give you the complete end to end report and this is we are going to see in the practical execution lab which is the next session okay and now when we talk about the server migration okay as i said this is a tool that is required for the migration of the server configurations Right. So the JBoss server migration tool is the preferred method for updating your server configurations to include the new features and settings in JBoss 8.0 while keeping your existing configurations. Okay. So this is the preferred tool that is required uh, for the uh, configuration changes from 7.8 or 6.27 or 7 to 8 version. Okay. So we'll keep your existing configuration as it is. For example, if you have a multiple uh, deployments, you have a multiple uh, data source configurations, you have a multiple some other configurations, right? JVM heap configurations that you need to persist after the upgrade. So all of your existing configurations will remain same. Okay. And it will only change the server configuration wherever the new functionalities have been incorporated in the new version of JBoss. The JBoss migration tool reads your existing JBoss EF server configuration files and add configurations for any new system, update the existing subsystem configurations with new features and remove any obsolete system configurations. That means if any new system or new configuration has been introduced, it will automatically be added in the new configuration files. Okay, after the migration or upgrade, and if any of the subsystem is depreciated or removed in the new version, that will automatically get removed from your older version after the upgrade. Okay, so you can use the JBoss server migration tool to migrate standalone servers and managed domains. So, irrespective of whether you are using the standalone instances or you are using the domain mode, okay, or the managed domain mode, okay, this tool you can use for uh, for the migration of your configurations for both of the domain, both of the mode or both you can say both of the operations mode of your JBoss. Okay. And you can download uh, similarly to uh, SMT tool, you can uh, go to the access.edit.com or developer.edit.com, search for the enterprise application platform 8.0 and then you can download the server migration tool. And then uh, to uh, change the server configuration, the commands are uh, the script that is provided for the migration. Then you have to give the source and target EF home your old EF home and the new EF home where you are going to migrate your JBoss server instance. Okay, so this is the way how you can uh, uh, upgrade your server configurations. Okay, so in a nutshell, what exactly we need to follow across, we need to follow, we have a two tools that we follow for the upgrade of the of your JBoss. So the one is for the server configuration and second is for the identify the changes that is required in your application. Okay, and then we follow the approach, our own approach for how we can do for the configuration changes in our applications, right? So this is all about the end-to-end -end configuration or understanding of how we can go for the upgrade. And now in next session, we will see the practical implementation of the upgrade. Thank you.